Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. MathBog and we're going to do some multiplying fractions. This is something we've already done before, so hopefully it's it's familiar. You might have forgot how to do it, but um, I think uh, of fractions, this is the easiest lesson. Um, uh, anyway, here we go. So uh, when we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. There is no common denominator. You just multiply straight across top times top over bottom times bottom. So here's an example. So here I'll just put 3 times 1 on top over 7 times 2 on the bottom. And 3 times 1 is 3. 7 times 2 is 14. Okay. And then algebra-wise, okay, I know variables, they get kind of... Uh, confusing. Here we have four of them, A, B, C, and D. Anyways, it's just the same. It's A times B over B, um, I'm sorry, top times top over bottom times bottom. So A times C, B times D. Okay, so, um, uh, and they'd say that where B and D can't equal zero. This, this confuses so many students right here, and that's okay. Uh, don't worry about that. All that means is you can't have any number over zero because what happens is, and this is corny and it's not true, but it's corny enough that I remember a, a wonderful teacher showed me this, that that zero won't hold up the number. It makes it roll over and fall down and the math police will come get you. I know it's dumb, but dumb things are, are better for me to remember. So anyways... Let's go ahead and multiply here. One-fifth times uh, one-third. So we're going to multiply top times top over bottom times bottom. One times one is one, and then five times three is 15. So it's uh, one-fifteenth. Okay, let's try um, uh, when we're multiplying a numerator of one fraction is the same as the denominator of another fraction. We can use mental math and cross-cancel. I'm sure you've heard of that. This will all start ringing a bell. We can use mental math to multiply. So, for example, can you see these fives uh, here? This numerator and this denominator are the same right here. Well, we can cancel those guys out, change them to ones. And what happens is um, uh, you're left with just four times one over one times nine. I should have put ones here and there. But that's okay. I'll do that uh, in, in the next few problems. So you get four ninths because uh, those fives canceled out. Okay, so here. Okay, now I don't have the same numbers or anything, but what I can do is recognize that three and nine are both divisible by three and four and eight are both divisible by four. So we'll go ahead and divide um, uh, these guys by three and these guys by four. So three goes into three once, three goes into nine three times. Okay, so I'm going to change those to one and three. Four goes into four once, four goes into eight two times. So I'm going to change those to uh, uh, one and two right there. Okay, and now we can just multiply straight across two times one over three times one. And so we get um, uh, two thirds on that. Okay. So the product of that uh, up there is two thirds. Product just means your multiply answer. That's all that means. Just fancy wording that textbooks like to use and be show offs. All right. So let's try some of these, you guys. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to kind of glance. Is there anything I can cancel? Not on if they're both on bottom. One's got to be on top. One's going to be on bottom. So I know two goes into six, but they're both on the bottom. So we multiply straight across one times five over two times six and one times five is one. Two times six is 12. I'm sorry. One times five is five. Two times six is 12. And so it's five twelfths. Okay, now let's see. Can I can I cancel anything on top and bottom? Doesn't look like it. So it's going to be seven times one, eight times four. Okay, and then seven times one is seven. Eight times four is thirty-two. Okay, how about here? Is there anything I can cancel? Yeah, these threes right here, they can cancel. I think I actually divided them by threes. Yeah, so divide by three, divide by three. They both get me ones right there. So now we have one times two over seven times one. So 1 times 2 is 2, 7 times 1 is 7, so 2 sevenths. Okay, here, 3 goes into 3 once, into 9 3 times, and then 4 doesn't go into 10, but 2 goes into 4, and 2 goes into 10, so we'll divide those guys by by 2s. 2 goes into um, 4 2 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times, and then 3 went into this 3 once, 3 went into this 3 uh I'm sorry, into this 9 three times. So now we can just multiply. It's all reduced right here. So 2 times 1 over 3 times 15 gets us 2 15. So I say 3 times 15, 3 times 5. So I'm just thinking ahead. 
All right, so let's try that with a problem, a, a real life application problem. So we have two thirds of a bag of flour. So this is two thirds full. And we're gonna use three fourths of this two thirds of the flour right here to make in panda dough. What's in panda dough? It's these delicious little sort of, I don't know, pastry things right here. So how much of the entire bag uh, do we make, uh, did we use to make dough? So basically the bag had two thirds of flour in it and of that two thirds, we're gonna take three fourths of the two thirds. So how much of the full bag of it was full did we do? So I'm just gonna move that up with the pictures out of the way so we have some more room right there. Okay, so one way is to make a model right here and a model is to cut it up into equal little squares right here, it works great. So this denominator is three, this denominator is four. So think the common denominator, remember that, uh, uh, that term common denominator in fact if I always said if I was in a, a rock and roll band that would be the the rock and roll band name the common denominators anyways uh, uh, so I'm gonna uh, it's 12 I'm gonna divide this up into uh, 12 equal squares so I'll cut this into thirds going this way and then cut this into four so right in the middle right there right there so it's gonna give us 12 equal squares right there all right so uh, let's see, I'm going to do, so let's talk about this two-thirds right here. Well, it, since it's cut up into three equal rows right here, here's one-third of them, here's another one-third, here's another one-third. So if I take two of them, that would represent two-thirds. So I'm going to shade this two-thirds in light blue. And then think of fourths. So here's one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, here's four-fourths. So I'm going to shade all of these guys, all of these guys, because this represent, represents three of the four rows in, I think I did pink right there, kind of red. So there's three fourths right there. So two thirds, uh, I'm sorry, three fourths of two thirds is where they, they overlap on the shading right there. So six of those 12 squares, so there's 12 squares when we started and six of them are shaded, have both types of shading in it. So so we have uh, 6 twelfths and 6 twelfths reduces to half of the bag right there. All right, another way is to just multiply. So the word of is, is math uh, word for multiply. So when we're finding 3 fourths of 2 thirds, then that's the same as 3 fourths times 2 thirds. And then let's see if we can cancel anything. Oh, we can. The threes can cancel, divide by threes. And then 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 4. So we'll divide those by 2s. And we get that. Now we can multiply across. 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. And we, get, um, we still get uh, 1 half of the bag. So the answer is we used 1 half of the entire bag. So that's what they're asking right there. All right, let's try something else here. So when multiplying mixed numbers, you know, like five and two thirds, we first change them to an improper fraction. And you probably forgot, or yeah, I know you've heard of that before. So improper fractions, here's an example. What we do is we first look at the denominator and the, and the whole number over here, and we multiply those. So four times two, and do you remember what we do with that three? We add it. So four times two is eight. 8 plus 3 is 11, and that's our new top number, 11. So this just becomes 11 fourths right there. The bottom number doesn't uh, change, okay? So it, when we get to that, then to get this back to this, we do how many times does 4 go into 11? It goes into 11 two times, and 4 times 2 is 8, so there's 3 left over. So 4 goes into 11 twice with 3 left over, so that's why 2 and 3 fourths is 11 fourths as an improper fraction. All right, we'll do that right here. So let's multiply 1 half times 2 and 3 fourths. So let's first um, uh, change uh, 2 and 3 fourths to an improper fraction. So we already did that in the prior example. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 11, so this becomes 11 fourths right there. So this right here is this right here. And then just kind of glance. Is there anything we can cancel? No. So 1 times 11 is 11. 2 times 4 is 8. So we get 11 eighths. And then we'll convert this back into a mixed number because you're 
textbook likes to do mixed numbers. When you guys get into high school, you guys improper fractions are just as good. But right now you're your teacher and uh, they I'd like you to know also how to convert it back to an, uh, a mixed number, you guys. So eight goes into 11 one time with three left over. So that equals one and three eighths. OK, so the product is one and three eighths. Okay, one more, you guys. Okay, here we have two mixed numbers. So let's change both of those to improper fractions. Okay, so here this is going to be the top number. We're just changing the top number. This is going to be 5 times 1 plus 4. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. So this will be 9 fifths. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So this will be 11 thirds. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right there. And then let's just glance. Is there anything we can cross cancel? Yes, this 3 and this 9, we can divide those by 3 right there. So when we divide by 3, then we just now, we got everything reduced. So 3 times 11 is 33. 5 times 1 is 5. So we get uh, 33 fifths. And let's see, we started with a um, uh, mixed number. So let's change this back to a mixed number. 5 goes into 33 6 times. 5 times 6 is 30. So it's 6 and there's 3 left over. So 6 and this denominator stays there. 6 and 3 fifths. Okay, so the product is uh, six and three fifths. All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense and take care.